Hi guys, we are going to learn how to image a stenosis. The anatomy of stenosis, what's the Bernoulli principle, and what does this have to do with driving? I'm gonna find this out. And as you can see, I got my new mic, let's get started. So first we need to talk about what a normal vessel looks like. Laminar flow, that is organized flow. So a normal healthy vessel does not have any atherosclerotic plaque. The blood can flow freely as it should be in a normal organized manner. So here, as you can see this image, we have a clear vessel, no plaque. Imagine a highway, four lanes, let's say a four lane highway. Everyone should know exactly how to drive in each lane. The people in the far left lane should be the fast drivers. The people that drive slower, they know, they should know that they should be in the far right lane driving slow. It's organized. There's a system to the speed at which each individual in their car should be driving. So similarly with a blood vessel, the blood typically flows in a uniform organized manner. The faster blood flow is going to be in the center of the vessel. Whereas on the sides of the vessel, on the outer parts of the vessel is where the slower flowing blood is. It's all going in the same direction. So as you can see in this image, the lighter color correlates to a higher velocity of flow. And you see that in the center of the image. So looking at the color map again, closer towards the center of the color map, the is the color that corresponds with slower or lower flows. So you see the darker red on the edges of the vessel. So that's slower moving blood on the outside of the vessels. And also when you have the spectral waveform, spectral Doppler, the white area of the waveform is the narrow range of blood velocities. So if you are really in the center of the vessel, this will create a clear spectral window. And the spectral window is what we call this little hollow area underneath the waveform. A clear spectral window is more black than it is a gray. So that means that all the blood flow is going within a small narrow range of velocities, not a wide range of velocities. So now that we've identified normal, let's move on to the abnormal, what we're here for in this video, the actual stenosis and learning about the Bernoulli principle. Here's an image of a stenosis. It's not the clearest image, but it will work. Proximally in the vessel, you see no atherosclerotic plaque. You see clear vessel, but more distantly, you see a lot of atherosclerotic plaque right here. That's a problem. That is an area of narrowing or a stenosis. Now let's discuss what happens at each stage and how that correlates to the Bernoulli principle. The Bernoulli principle. Bernoulli. Bernoulli. Yes, you do pronounce the double L's. Is a principle that states that the amount, total amount of energy is going to stay the same throughout each part of a stenosis. However, the form of energy at each stage will change, but the total energy will stay the same. So that comes from the law of conservation of energy. So before a stenosis, the blood starts to slow down. It's like a just like on the highway, when you see an accident on the road, all the cars start to slow down. They're trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to get through this area? I'm trying to get where I need to go, but we see all these cars stopping. So all that blood is under a lot of pressure. It's got to figure out, okay, where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? That is the pressure energy that's going on. So as you can see here in this image, it's a lower velocity. Now let's see what happens at the stenosis. Okay, first with the color flow. You see where we had more so a laminar looking color flow more proximally. Now more distally where that atherosclerotic plaque is, oh, the color flow is going crazy. It's going crazy. And as you can see, the colors are going from red to yellow to light blue to the darker blue. So that is wrapping around from the darker to the light of the color map. 
That is called aliasing. So when you see aliasing, you know there's an issue there if you have your scale at the right level. And since the colors are wrapping around these lighter colors, that means higher velocity. Now let's look at the spectral waveform. High velocity flow here within the stenosis. The blood is trying to zoom through this narrow area. Okay, I got to get to where I need to go. I need to scoot past this person. I need to scoot past this person. Each car is trying to get through where it needs to go. So it's high velocity. So this pressure energy at the stenosis turns into kinetic energy because of the high velocity. Go, 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 go. Let's squeeze through this narrow area. That's what the blood is saying. So as you can see here, you have velocities of 257, which is pretty high, especially for this area of the body. So the total amount of energy is the same, but it's just changing the form of energy. Now at the next stage, after the stenosis, let's see what's going on with the blood vessels. After the area of narrowing, imagine the people in the, driving in the car. Guess what happens when you're riding on the highway after an accident? Rubberneckers. Always trying to turn around and see what just happened. See what just happened. If you don't drive straight, goodness. So this is the post turbulence that's happening. The pressure energy is back up. The pressure is getting worse. The kinetic energy is down. It's not as high velocity because folks want to rubberneck all the time. So the blood, we don't have a clear spectral window anymore like we did with the laminar flow. The blood is going through a wide range of velocities right now. Everybody is going at a different speed. You have some people going faster than others all in the same area. So the pulsatility is decreased. There's less pulsatile flow. So this was a sample of the exact same teachings that are offered in my course, in both of my courses, rather, the circulatory skill set, which is a mini course, and the SPI Simplified, which includes the circulatory skill set. So if you like the way I teach, the, you like the way I explain things, you like analogies, then the SPI Simplified and the circulatory skill set are for you. I would definitely recommend the SBI Simplified if you are just starting out, you're in school, you're studying for the SPI exam, or, or even just taking ultrasound physics, just starting that, because you will have access to the course for 24 months. So you can go through your whole program with that course and take your SBI exam after you finish. Or if you are just starting out working and you're, you really don't understand how to use Doppler, color Doppler, and that's very important. I'm going to say that again. It's very important to know how to use color Doppler, how to use spectral Doppler, even if you don't work in vascular. Because I see some, I see some things that general sonographers do. This course can help you a lot. Check the link in the bio to check out both of these courses. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I finally listened to those who suggested I get a microphone. Hopefully the audio is a lot better for you guys. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All the good things. Thank you guys so much for your support. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <music>